All right. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to the PetroTeach webinar on gas hydrates theory and practice. I am Hassan Kalimayi and represent PetroTeach today and act as facilitator in today's webinar. As you already heard from the organizer, you are entering as listening only mode and muted. But before we proceed the event, let us check if you receive my voice. There is a window in front of you and by clicking on the arrow, you will see the full window version with the chat box. Please type the word hi or hello or something to make sure that we have established the full communication. Can everybody hear me? Please type the word hi or hello or something to make sure that we have established the full communication. I haven't received any word from your side, but I assume that everything is okay. So the agenda today, the agenda of the events begins with a brief introduction to the PetroTeach. Then we introduce our distinguished instructor, Professor Bahman Tohidi, followed by some information about the course agenda on the gas hydrate theory and practice by PetroTeach on coming months. Next, we follow and listen to the webinar lecture, which lasts 45 to 60 minutes. And finally, we will have some Q&A session for approximately 15 minutes. PetroTeach is a global training solutions provider to the oil and gas industry. We are mainly focused on the upstream section by almost 150 training courses through 50 distinguished instructors with ambition to expand to the downstream section. For more information, please visit our website www.petro-teach.com and also download our catalog. You may also follow us in social media like LinkedIn. The webinar today is part of the webinar series that PetroTeach will be offering during August 2020. In going forward, we expect to see Professor Tapan Murkerji on rock physics for quantitative reservoir characterization in 10th of August. Dr. Babak Jafarizadeh on exploration, valuation, and decision analysis in August 16, and 3D printing as a new tool for research and innovation by Dr. Sergei Ishoto on August 24. So we look forward to see you on those upcoming events. This is a series of about 20 PetroTeach webinar, which will present in the rest of this year, 2020. And today's webinar is about <laughs> gas hydrates, a common problem in oil and gas industry. And the title of the presentation is Gas Hydrates 
theory and practice. The material which will be covered today is related to Professor Tohidi's experience during last 35 years. So we are pleased that Professor Tohidi can join us today. And you can see his work experience mainly as a professor in Heriotwat University and also consultancy to the number of companies around the world. He is expert on gas hydrates, flow assurance, PVT phase behavior and properties, EOR and CO2 sequence sequestration and EOR. He leads hydrate, flow assurance and phase equilibria research group at Institute of Petroleum Engineering at Heriotwat University. He is the Director of International Center for Gas Hydrate Research and Center for Flow Assurance Research at Institute of Geoenergy. And also he is Managing Director of HydroFact Limited, a Heriot Watt spin-out company. He is recipient of Lifetime Achievement from the 9th International Conference on Gas Hydrate, Denver, USA. Winner of the Queen's Anniversary Awards in 2015. And his research group work was recognized as one of the top 10 UK examples of the role of chemical engineering in modern world by ICHME in 2016. He has author of more than 450 publications, several book chapters, and also 13 patents. Petrotich has already planned a full online course on gas hydrate theory and practice. We scheduled this course to be held in 14 to 18 of September and also in 16 to 20 of November. Therefore, if you are interested, please contact Petrotich and register uh, on information provided in the slide or kindly follow us on our website or social media. So let's move to the presentation. I want to remind you all that you can post your questions using the same chat box introduced at the beginning. At the Q&A session after the lecture, they will be answered. So I'm going to hand over the talk to Professor Tohidi to address his presentation. Here you are, Bahman, please go ahead. Right, um, let's see. Yeah. Now, I assume you can see my screen and you can see me. Uh, yes. Thank you very much for joining this webinar. Um, I just say hello and then um, basically turn off my video um, and then come back to you at the end. So, um, the starting with the hydrogen bonding. Um, let's see if I can have it for the screen, yeah. Um, hydrogen bonding, you know, is basically water is very strange uh, compound because uh, it can form hydrogen bonding. So, and hydrogen bonding is basically the electron loses um, hydrogen loses electron to oxygen. So it becomes partially positive and the electron cloud of oxygen being partially negative. So in addition to um, underworld forces, you have electron um, hydrogen bonding. That gives water very, very stable condition. That's why water can freeze and can uh, melt or become liquid at relatively high temperature. Um, so when water is in the liquid state, 
you have this hydrogen bonding and they form shape like this. And if we have gas molecule, this um, green sphere is the gas molecule. And this red is oxygen, the white are hydrogen. So when we have gas molecule, the water molecule um, get trapped in the cages that um, water molecule form. So the gas molecule becomes trapped in the cages that water molecule uh, form. For the formation of hydrate, we need hydrogen bonding. So either we need water or ice. And then we need suitable size molecule. So if the size of the molecule are too big, they cannot fit in this cavity. And therefore they cannot form hydrate. And we need suitable temperature and pressure condition. So suitable temperature and pressure condition is this curve. To the right, we don't have hydrate. To the left, we have hydrate. Now the position of this curve depends on the composition of hydrocarbon phase and composition of water phase. Now, relatively, the position of this water molecule in this structure is fixed. So how much this gas molecule is close to the water molecule depends on the size of gas molecule. If there are very small, the interaction is not very strong. If it is very big, again, they repair each other. So like here, imagine we have a molecule here. If the other molecule is somewhere here, there is no interaction between this molecule and this molecule. So interaction is zero. So if we have a molecule like hydrogen or nitrogen, it's very difficult to form hydrate. But when the molecules cl get closer to each other, they basically change the polarity. So the electron goes to one side, um, the proton the other side, and they form the wonderful forces. So they attract each other. So like here, you see that if, if they get close to each other, they attract each other. If they get too close to each other, they repel each other. So molecules like isobutene or propane, like cycloheptane, uh, they have high tendency to form hydrate. So you see that the, this curve is a function of the hydrocarbon phase composition, gas phase composition. The other important factor is the composition of water. If we have component or that are dissolved in water, for their dissolution, some water molecules should be around them and make them dissolve. So therefore, less molecule, water molecule is available for hydrate formation. And therefore, this will work as a hydrate inhibitor. And we use this property to merge hydrate blockage or to prevent hydrate formation.
<clears throat> there are three main structure of ion space. The initial or the common structure is cage and a small cage. So all of these different structure, they have a small cage. So two of these small cage and six of the large cage with instruction one, and then 16 of the small cages and eight large cages for instruction two. And these cages, they're slightly different. This one has um, 14 faces, and this one has 16 um, faces. And then a structured edge we normally does not form in natural environment. So normally in oil industry, 99 or 95% of hydrate are structured too. And very small when we have very lean gases, we can form a structure one. Now, there's a video showing the hydrate formation. This is a cell, high pressure cell, and you can see that at the in interface, most of hydrates form at the interface. The reason they form in the in at the interface is because the amount of gas in hydrate structure is a lot more than the amount of gas in aqueous phase. Therefore, hydrate normally starts at the interface. But for formation of hydrate, we don't need gas. Hydrate can form from gas dissolving water. Here you don't see any gas molecule, and, but we can form hydrate. And you see that um, CO2 that have, they have also formed hydrate in methane, but CO2 here you can see that is forming significant amount of hydrate in the aqueous phase without any gas phase. And we can control the rate of hydrate formation by playing with the pressure. And you can see that they are like a um, tree because they want to move the heat. So remember, look the heat, so they form sort of fins to move the heat because hydrate formation is exothermic. It produces a lot of heat, so we need to use the heat. Now, as I mentioned to you earlier, different fuel compounds have different tendency towards hydrate formation. In the gases we had in the industry, H2S, you see that is very strong hydrate form. After that, IC4. After that, propane. After that, C2. After that, CO2. Yeah? And after that, methane. And then, nitrogen. The point that changing the angle, this is the bubble point, vapor, basically vapor pressure line, that where above vapor pressure line we have liquid, below that we have gas. So that gives you a feeling that how the tendency of different compounds in forming high speed. So if hydrocarbon is a mixture of these compounds, so depending on the composition and concentration, you can have hydrate phase boundary of the system somewhere in between. So for example, if it is here, then CO2 is an inhibitor, nitrogen is inhibitor, but methane is a promoter. If it is here, then H2S is a promoter and methane is an inhibitor because they 
make it hydrate formation uh, difficult. So the phase boundary of the uh, system depends on the composition of the gas. <clears throat> and as I mentioned earlier, we have two major hybrid structures in the oil industry. Now, I just use our software and predicted the hydrate phase boundary of this mixture. I call it natural gas for future uses of this mixture. So here I'm plotting the hybrid phase boundary for the structure two and the structure one using that gas this mixture. So its operating condition here, then the structure two only form. If it is here, then there is a potential for both structure one and structure two forming. So that's something that can be important when we are trying to prevent hydrate formation. So, I, you know, it's better to be able to predict the position of different structure when we are trying to prevent hydrate formation. There is another mixture. This is a very lean gas nugget field in the North Sea. You see that 97, 98% is methane, a small amount of different compounds. You see that here, the structure two is to the left of the structure one. So, hydrate determining phase boundary structure is determined by structure one. So, here is that 5% I told you that the system is structure one and 95 percent of the system we see around the world are structure two this is another system and this is from middle east another system this is a composition here you see that structure one and structure two are very close to each other and at low pressure structure two is stable and high pressure structure one is stable. The reason it's more stable is because it can form first before the other structure forming. Now, condition that we can form a hydrate blockage or hydrate problem is high pressure, low temperature, when we have choke, regulator, vent, Safety valve, you know, safety valve open, and then can form high gates and block in the safety valve itself. Water in the pipeline remaining from um, pressure testing or office spec gases, you know, they can all result in high gate formation. There are many more cases, but just an example where you have to look for high gate, where the risk of high gate is maximum. So how we prevent hydrate formation? Here, as I mentioned to you, you can plot this line easily by knowing the gas composition and water composition. Then depending on your pipeline condition, I mean, some, most pipeline, they have this, you know, basically continuous drop in pressure and temperature and they can go inside hydrate phase boundary. But there are pipelines that can have a strange behavior. This is from Melanga in Norway, that the, the, we have a continental shelf that dropped the, the depths of water for around a thousand meters. So at the bottom here, the temperature is minus one, minus two. So it's very cold. And then, then we, produce here and then the pipeline goes to the continental shelf and then here the depth is a lot less and the temperature will increase. So you see that here the um, inlet from the well to the pipeline is outside hydrate phase boundary. 
but as we progress, it cool down, and then can go inside hydrogen space finally. And then it comes up, the temperature increases, but obviously pressure is dropping, and then here again, it goes outside. So you see that at the beginning and the end, we don't have hydrogen formation, but in the middle somewhere here, we can have hydrogen formation. Now, how to prevent hydrogen problem? So one option is that hydrogen, you can look at hydrogen as a reaction that you will have water, you have gas, you form a solid. So if you remove one of the reactants, then we don't form hydrate. So for example, is if the operating condition is 10 degrees and 200 bar here, we are inside hydrate phase boundary. But we can reduce the amount of water by dehydration unit and reduce the amount of water. For example, here uh, we have 500 ppm water, here we have uh, 200 ppm, 150. We need to reduce the water content between 100 ppm to uh, 150 ppm. So we can reduce the amount of water and prevent hydrate formation. But reducing the amount of water is basically expensive. You need facility, especially offshore, is not possible to have. But you can see that this is hydrate forming from water in the gas phase, because you see that homogeneous hydrate formation. So either hydrate forming from gas phase or the gas velocity, which is high velocity, form high, uh, water into sort of mist. And that mist, water droplet, they basically do not form a liquid phase at the bottom of the pipeline. So hydrate is forming like this. Another important point these days that we are talking about carbon capture and storage is behavior of CO2 and hydrate in CO2 stream. So we have CO2, we want to transfer CO2 to somewhere uh, offshore to inject it to the reservoir. This is phase behavior of CO2. You can see that uh, the um, basically triple point is minus 56.4, and the critical point is 31 and temperature and pressure is 73. You can see that the system can go within critical point. And as you know, um, predicting behavior of the system near critical point is not an easy task. So here is hybrid phase boundary of pure, pure CO2 when we have extra water. If we have extra water, this is hydrate phase boundary, this is bubble point of CO2, the dashed line, and then here is a bubble point CO2 is liquid, here CO2 is vapor. So that's fine, that's similar to any other compound. But if you look at the amount of water, you can see the amount of water in hydrocarbon phase, and this is versus pressure. And look at the, uh, for ethane, for example, here, the blue line, you can see that this is bubble point of ethane. You see that the amount of water in liquid ethane is less than vapor. Yeah, this is vapor. This is, this is a bubble point of ethane at this temperature, five degrees. You see that this is uh, vapor ethane, this is liquid ethane. You see that the amount of water dissolving liquid ethane is reduced. And similarly for propane. But for um, CO2 and H2S, when they become liquid, the amount of water increases. When they become liquid, the amount of water increases. So uh, the liquid CO2 can dissolve more water. So this is the um, amount of water in uh, 
um, vapor and liquid CO2. This is at 15 degrees. You can see the bubble point of CO2 is around 50 bar. You can see that initially when you increase the amount, the pressure, you see the amount of water in equilibrium with vapor is uh, dropping. But when it goes similar to any other compound, but when you go to the uh, bubble point, you see that the increasing pressure, the amount of water increases. So when we have limited water, then it would be a problem. You see that at, when we have limited water, if we have plenty of water, this is phase envelope of CO2, as I showed the two figure earlier. But we have when we have 250 ppm water, then here up to bubble point is, is similar. But when we reach the bubble point, there is a competition between hydrate to form hydrate, get the water for hydrate formation, and liquid CO2. And here liquid CO2 wins because it can, uh, it can dissolve more water. So therefore you see that there is a continuity in the phase, uh, phase behavior of CO2 hydrate. So CO2 hydrate phase envelope would be something like this. Okay, so not a lot of uh, software can predict that. So be careful the software you are using for liquid CO2. This is a real case. The company approached us and they said that they have this um, um, triangle operating condition. And they, they asked us if we have operating condition like this. Is there any risk of hydrate formation? And if you plot it, then you see that no, because this is outside hydrogen's phase boundary for liquid CO2. You are above the bubble point of CO2, this blue line, the bubble point of CO2, and it will pop um, hydrogen's phase boundary is here, and this is outside hydrogen's phase boundary. So if we, if we dry the CO2 to 250 ppm, then there is no risk of hydrogen formation. And then they said, oh, we have 2% hydrogen. Will that change your story? When you have, um, when you have two compounds, then you have a phase envelope. And this is the phase envelope of CO2 plus 2% hydrogen. And you see one of these points will move to inside hydrogen phase boundary. Now, there are two options here. They, can, they have to dry further or they have to use something better. So this has been published. It's, uh, it's been uh, 123.778. So that was about dehydration. And then you had other option is that to increase system temperature. Uh, or heating uh, or using. Excuse yes. me, Bahman. Uh, we have some uh, comments from some uh, audience. Yes. The uh, quality of the voice is not uh, so good. Uh, okay. They have some problems with the uh, voice quality. Is there anything that we can fix it? Maybe is I it? speak a slower. Um, I'm using a, a microphone. Okay. I think that's the best I can do. Mm -hmm. I can use computer uh, microphone, inbuilt microphone. Okay. Uh, let's try with the com computer, computer, yes. Okay. Hear me? Hello? Hello. Hello. Yeah, can yes. you hear me? Yes, maybe it's okay, uh, better. I, yeah, I, I'll try with computer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, microphone. Okay. Sorry, uh, sorry. Um, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so, one option is to increase system temperature or uh, use insulation. And the other one is reduce the system pressure. First, I'll discuss 
increase in temperature. Yes, if you maintain the pipeline temperature and or heat it, then we can move outside high three phase boundary. This is uh, especially used in countries like Norway that they don't like to use um, inhibitor. They don't like to use um, um, they, they don't like to use any inhibitor uh, because of environmental issues. So that's another option, but obviously it's a bit expensive. The other option is that to reduce the system pressure. We don't really do that because pressure is energy. We don't want to lose energy. If it is only one bar or two bar, move us outside hydrogen phase boundary, that's fine because we can recover the pressure in the compressor unit. And therefore, the extra cost, but we really don't use pressure draw for avoiding high fit. So um, we, need to, um, we need to find another solution. We only use it for uh, removing the blockage. Uh, injection of thermodynamic inhibitor methanol, ethanol, glycol, and other inhibitor. They basically work on the water phase. It's not as much dependent on the hydrocarbon phase. So what they do, they um, basically dissolve in water. So when they dissolve in water, then uh, some water molecules are busy uh, dissolving them. So they are, we don't have enough water molecule to form hydrate, so we need to cool further. And that's, that's the way they work for uh, avoiding hydrate. So the problem with thermodynamic inhibitor is that we need a lot of them in the active space, between 30 to 50 or 60 percent. So if we have high water cut, that's going to be very expensive especially offshore. So when you are using thermodynamic inhibitor, you need to be very careful about not forming salt block because salt is soluble in water. It has a, it has a limit for solubility. For example, in NaCl, you can dissolve 25% NaCl, but anymore, it can become solid. But the alcohols are miscible. They can dissolve from zero to 100% uh, alcohol or glycol in water. So if they are start competing with each other, what will come out is salt. So you need to be aware of, be careful when you are using hydrogen inhibitor and salt. This is a, a picture from a well bore in North, uh, Southern North Sea. Another option is to use anticoagulomonan. Like anticoagulomonan, they don't prevent hydrate formation, but they allow hydrate to become a slurry and be transported. You can see that without chemical, they, with time, they become bigger and bigger. But with antiagglomerin, no. I have a video here, if I can show it. Um, this is a testing on tagromanent. You can see that the bowl is here. This is hydrated slurry. And we need to make sure that the bowl can move inside the slurry. And uh, also show that if hydrate is sticking to the wall. But there are other techniques as well. That's one of the techniques. Um, for evaluating on
One point that I, I wanted to expand a little more, a little more on using a kinetic hydrate inhibitor, but I'm worried about the time. But kinetic hydrate inhibitor, and they are believe that they can delay hydrate formation. They can delay hydrate formation for the certain period of time. And for example, here, uh, you see that the system, this is temperature at four degrees. This is the uh, cell pressure at 1400. You see that there is no, initially because temperature drop, um, pressure is dropping and then pressure is constant up to 1400 uh, minutes. From 200 to 1400, so 1200 delay in hydrate formation. So that is around the 20 hours. So if the uh, fluid move outside hydrate phase boundary within 12, uh, 20 hours, it doesn't form. But in reality, we investigated a bit more. We saw that for without inhibitor, you see that hydrate forming, you cool down the system, you need some soft cooling to form hydrate, and then follow the hydrate phase boundary of methane, this is methane, and then when you come out of the system, then it melts. When we go back and cool down again, now we have nucleation, so hydrate form easily, okay? So there is no, this is soft cooling required to start nucleation, but when we have nucleation, there is no subcooling required. Now, we repeat this system, this uh, test, with very small amount of PVK. You can see that we form hydrate, yeah? but the rate of hydrate formation is slower. This is every five minutes. So when we want to melt hydrate, you see that we have to go a lot outside hydrate phase boundary. Then previous one, we just needed one degree upside and dissociate hydrate. Here we need around three, four degree upside hydrate. So something is happening here. And the once we go on the phase boundary, you expect this to go this way, but it goes this way. What does it mean? This hydrate is melting. So, and then if you cool down, you see that's form here. And here, up to this area, it doesn't form. So we realize that kinetic PV cap based kinetic hydrate inhibitor, they have more than um, conventional kinetic hydrate inhibitor. So they basically work like a thermodynamic inhibitor. And remember, this con the amount of inhibitor is very little. So ideal for offshore rigs that we don't have enough space for storage. So we have done a lot more tests on it and find some region, the con continuous inhibition region, a slow growth region, and rapid growth region. So we identify this region and also we that we have a slow dissociation region, a slow dissociation region. This, it means that if you have KHI, you have to be very careful not to form hydrate, because if you form hydrate, you need to heat a lot more. So just coming out of hydrate phase boundary is not enough. So we identify these regions, and from this region, for this is for methane, <laughs> Then we tested different chemicals, and you see that different chemicals, they have different protection, yeah? They have different protection. Some, they have no protection in a structure two, a structure one. So this will enable us to design or predict which KHI will work for which system. And that gives us 
huge ability or advantage because in the past, KHI needs, needed to be tested individually, but now we can choose which KHI. For example, if you are six degrees inside hydrate phase boundary, like here, we can use all the inhibitor except F. If we are, for example, eight degree inside hydrate phase boundary, we can use C and B. So we can decide which inhibitor to go further testing. So we don't need to test all inhibitor. Now, how we do that? The first plot, the stable structure. Here, for this natural gas, which was 85% methane and 5% ethane and propane and the rest, we structure two stable structure. And then structure one, PV cap, we know that PV cap prevent the structure two. So the strength of the chemical is from structure one onward. So for this chemical, for PV cap, we have the 5.2 degrees inside the structure one. So total inhibition becomes 5.2 here and around, around uh, 5, 6 degrees, so 11 degrees. And we can also plot a slow growth through region and we can find out the fast formation region. So you see that we, we can, for this system, for the structure two, KHI can provide 10 degree subcooling. But if you go for the other system that the structure one is stable, green gas that I mentioned to you, nugget, you see that the structure one is stable and the subcooling we can get is 5.2. This is another case from Middle East you can see that here at low pressure, structure two is stable, at high pressure, structure one is stable. But the inhibition we can get is only 5.2. So this will enable us to predict if the KHI will work in the system or not. Obviously in the course, we can discuss this a little bit more. Now, another, I want to, divert your attention to somewhere else. Now I want to move some of the new technology in preventing um, hydrate formation and blockage. If you remember, I said that hydrate formation depends on hydrocarbon phase and water phase, aqueous phase. Now, if you have these two, we can predict hydrate phase boundary. The other point is that can we predict this one? Yes, we can by using computer simulation or some pressure and temperature sensors. So we know what is the condition of the pipeline and then we can adjust the amount of inhibitor we inject to move this curve back and forth, okay? But to be able to do that, we have we need composition of hydrocarbon phase and we need a composition of water phase. Composition of hydrocarbon phase within a short period of time doesn't change. Basically, it doesn't change. So hydrocarbon phase doesn't change. The only change that will change is the composition of aqueous phase. And we, if we find something that can detect or determine composition of aqueous phase, we can plot this hydrate phase boundary and safety margin. And it is very good to be able to do that because we have uncertainty, uncertainty on the water cut and then if equipment malfunction or human error or changes in the uh, system condition, or if the inhibitor is of a spec. So here we um, have a device here, we call it HydroCheck. 
basically you have you can have a 100 cc of the produced water you measure electrical conductivity and the speed of sound from that you can have two equations two unknown the system will determine the concentration of salt and inhibitor and then you have hydrocarbon phase you have um, water phase and and then you can use a correlation or model and predict hydrate phase bound. If the predicted hydrate phase boundary is here, then there is a risk of hydrate. You need to increase the amount of inhibitor. If it is here, it is very close. If it is, you can put a safety margin, then two, three degrees safety margin. And then finally here, we have too much inhibitor. We have too much inhibitor. So um, this can, that traffic light I mentioned, uh, you know, it is uh, achieved here. The other um, novel idea or new development is using the, uh, this property of different components in forming hydrate. So if hydrates form, they concept, this compound, like IC4, uh, uh, propane, or H2S, will be trapped in the hydrates structure. So therefore, the concentration of this compound in the gas phase is reduced. By that, we can uh, basically get any warning that hydrates is forming in the pipeline. And then uh, we can also, for example, if you have a blockage, by analyzing the gas, we can say is the blockage be removed or not. Or also, we can also predict the position or the point of hydrate formation. The last slide, depressurize the different option for um, use heating, injection of thermodynamic inhibitor, we can change the composition of gas on combination of the above. So at the end, hydrate is not bad news. This is hydrate can produce gas energy. Uh, Water will be from here, yeah, and it will be prepared for national geography. So, thank you very much. Any question? Okay, thank you very much, Bahman. My pleasure for the nice presentation. Also, we had some uh, comments from students.